So today's service is all about transition. First, we're honoring our high school seniors who are entering the world as young adults. They've had ceremonies and parties and bridging and a milestone achievement that we're marking here. But here's the thing though, friends, I'm your minister and it's my job to tell you the truth. There is no switch that someone flips and then boom, you're an adult. It's not how it goes. I just want to tell you this now so that it doesn't come to you as a shot later when you're 26 and you still don't know how to pay the light bill, right? <laughs> the brutal truth of it is, nobody knows what we're doing. <laughs> None of us really fully know. Now sure, we might become an expert in a certain field. We might gain expertise with many parts of adulthood. But a lot of being adult is figuring this stuff out as you go. Even the most adultiest adult that you know is still just figuring stuff out. Now, I want you to know this for two reasons. First of all, if you don't have it all figured out, you are not behind and you are not failing. And second of all, if you do feel like you have it all figured out, that's when you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that we gain knowledge and experience is by actually doing stuff. And that means that being, you have to be in the uncomfortable position of not knowing how to do that stuff first. By the end of your 20s, you will probably know how to file your taxes, how to patch a hole in the wall, and how to go through a breakup. By the end of your 30s, you'll probably know how to undergo a major medical procedure of some kind. You'll know how to hire movers and negotiate a raise. That is exactly as far as I've gotten, so that's all I can tell you. <laughs> I'm starting to get suspicious of what I'm going to learn in the 40s. <laughs> all that we can do is just try our best through all of these things and to feel okay with the discomfort of not knowing how to do them while we're doing them. All we can hope for is that we can draw from the experience of our past to pull us through the challenges of our present. And that, friends, is adulting. Which brings us to the second transition that we are honoring today. And that is change in our congregation, was alluded to earlier. Today is indeed the end of an era at Birmingham Unitarian Church. We are saying goodbye to three staff members, two of whom have been here since our graduating seniors were in the nursery. We're also saying goodbye to an important lay leader who has essentially served as a, in a pastoral role in our congregation for decades. Now, this transition is hard for all of us. It means change. It means uncertainty in our congregations, programming, and in our ministry to each other in the world. It means the loss of expertise. It means the loss of institutional knowledge. It means shifting long-standing relationships. It's a lot of dealing with the unknown. This is next level adulting that we're doing as a congregation. <laughs> But, just as with our young adults, I want to tell everyone here that uncertainty is just a part of life. Learning how to make our way through a challenge is how we grow as people and it is how we grow as a congregation. Change can be uncomfortable, but it is not death. Do not ever mistake that. In fact, I would argue that change is a sign of life. When an organism is no longer adapting to its environment, that's when there's a problem. Just like our graduating seniors will learn to draw from their past to overcome the challenges of their future, we will too. The UC has been through change and transition before some of it epically 
the Hillary Queen tumultuous. <laughs> I've read that history book, I know what happened. <laughs> there could be operas written about certain chapters of our past. <laughs> it got real. And yet here we are. We have a good thing here. And that doesn't change because our staffing changes. It doesn't change because our programming changes. We will draw from the deep well of EUC and UU history to pull us through the changes we are facing. And if we play this right, one day we will look back with pride on how we handled this chapter in our history. We have an opportunity here. Those of you leaving this congregation to go out into the world as adults for the first time have a set of real challenges before you. I am so grateful for our younger generations. Those of us who have been out here adulting for a while now are tired and we need you. <laughs> we need your ingenuity. We need your hope for the future, your commitment to figuring things out. We need the spectacularly marvelous ways in which you will mess up. We need all of that. We need you in the world, and we need you in this congregation, and we need you in Unitarian Universalism. And those of us who are staying here to open the next chapter in BUC's history also have a set of real challenges before us. Time, as far as I know, moves in one direction and leaves us with a set of questions. As we are compelled forward, we must ask ourselves, who do we want to be in the face of these challenges? When the next installment of that EUC history book is written, will it say that we supported and loved each other through a time of anxiety? Or will it say that we let negativity, fear, and gossip run all over us? That's up to us. We're at a crossroads, friends. We can't control the changes that we face, but we can choose how we face them. As we encounter challenges, all of us, may we remember the rich soil that serves as our foundation. We have a deep and beautiful history from which to draw as we make our choices in the present. May we remember that there is counsel in that history and comfort in the knowledge of past trials. May we know deep down in our souls that we are never alone. There are guiding stars that have come before us and guiding stars who are here with us now. And may we know also that we are the guiding stars of future generations. And we owe it to them to get it right. We are compelled to excellence on their behalf. And may we know above all else that we will face difficulties and we will make epic mistakes because that is how we learn and that is how we grow. So let us be bold in our living and in our loving. Let us be fierce keepers of our traditions let us also be innovative in creating our future. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.